and today to Faith in Jesus Ministries. My name is Michael Barclay, preacher. One of the things you got to understand is God is not working on fixing your problem because it's already fixed. It's already taken care of. It's already part of the plan. It's already part of the finished work. It's done. He's already done it. He's already got you covered. You got to understand that your faith is a positive attitude towards something. It's already been finished. You got to understand your faith is what appropriates or obtains what Jesus has already finished. You got to understand is how you think about something is how your faith is going to be released towards it. If I don't think I'm already healed, then guess what? The suggestion from the enemy, the accuser of the brethren, will say you are not healed. Check out how you feel. Check out what you're going through. And he will talk you out of what you already have. Thinking that you try, you got to get God to do what's already done. It's crucial and vital that we know to this day how to win the battle between the two ears. It's the accuser of the brethren. We got to tame our mind so it can receive the finished works of grace. That's not just one of these little one, two, one, two, three things. It is something that's going to require your attention. Attend to my word, the scripture says. So you got to ask yourself, what am I giving my attention to? What am I thinking about? I'm going to try in the next couple of weeks to get you to understand that you need to be a good custodian of your thought life. You've got to become aware of what you are thinking. You've got to check out the way that you're thinking. You have to become increasingly aware of what's going on in your mind. It is, it is the ground that Satan depends on to have any kind of victory in your life. He wants to be a part of the suggestion. He wants to accuse. He wants to plant thoughts. Look what he did with Adam and Eve. That whole thing wasn't about the devil showing up in the garden and beating them up. He showed up with a very crafty, subtle suggestion. But that very crafty, subtle suggestion, they started thinking about it. The whole thing was, let me get them to start thinking about something they hadn't thought about. Let me get them to start thinking about God shortchanging them. Maybe I can get them to think that there's something that God doesn't want them to have. So he asked this question. He just shows up with the question. Had God said? She said, no, what God said is we could eat all of the trees of the garden except this one. And all he wants to do is get her to start thinking something she wasn't supposed to be thinking. Maybe God doesn't want you to start eating of that tree because he knows that you'll be like him, knowing the difference between good and evil. It's the thought, the conception of the thought. Now you're thinking about one tree, one tree in the garden. You just get busy eating all the other trees. You forget about that one tree. The devil says, if I can get you to start thinking about this one tree, then Lord have mercy. What happens is the temptation comes because the enemy is able to get them to start thinking about the one tree thing he wanted to tempt them with. I want you to write this down. You cannot be tempted with anything that you first think about. You cannot be tempted from anything that you don't first think about. The enemy is going to tempt you in any area of your life. You must first all get you all to think about it. That's why the Bible is so consistent in the New Testament about what you think about. Think on those things which are good. Think on those things which are lovely. Think on those things which are a good report. Be any virtue, if there be any praise. Think on these things that are concerning God. What Jesus has promised you and what the grace of God has provided. Satan will have you thinking that it's okay to let your mind to wander. It's all right every now and then for me to think about some things. And... If you think about things, it's hard to hold on to Christian thoughts without something else coming in to try to distract your thinking. What is it the devil knows that a Christian is keeping his mind steady on the word? He said, let me get in my prayer place and see how long I can keep my mind on this scripture without the devil interrupting me. What is it the devil knows about this mind that brought him success and victory? He don't want you to use it to bring success and victory into your own life. Mind, the mind, the mind. Y'all, excuse me, I have a personal relationship with Jesus. And when I hear things, I have to stop preaching. Because the stuff he tries to tell me when I'm talking. Do not confuse this with positive thinking. 
not talking about positive thinking. I'm talking about thinking that lines up with the word. I'm talking about thinking that is positive, thinking that lines up with the word. When you're thinking about the word of God, hallelujah, the positive is going to be in the word of God. Also, the power is going to be in the word of God. Or you can go around thinking, by his stripes I am healed. He carried all my sickness and all my pain and all my disease. In the name of Jesus, his life lives on the inside of me. The very life that raised Jesus from the dead quickens my mortal body. By that same spirit, it's been a trick of the devil for years. I've been trying to expose to the light on this little trickery of the devil. And you're sitting here thinking, how did I get here? How am I going to get out of here? The enemy is doing you just like he did Adam and Eve. Just if I can give them a suggestion to try to get you thinking in a direction. I can sit back and watch them create their own havoc. I can get you to be alarmed about something. Get you to panic about something. You know what panic is? It's groundless fear. That means you start being afraid when there's no reason to be afraid. So when the enemy says, I can, if I can keep you in that fear, if I can get you to believe a lie, talk yourself into a lie being the truth. If it's not there, I can use your faith to bring it to manifestation. That wasn't even there when you started being alarmed about time to beat him in his own game. And he shows up with a thought. Just say, no, 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 no. This don't think that way. Got me worried about tomorrow. But the Bible says don't worry about tomorrow. So tomorrow will have enough worries of its own. You got to get your thinking under control. When you start thinking about tomorrow, you got to say, no, I can't think about tomorrow. I have to think about right now. I'm right here in today. You have to learn how to enjoy today. You have to learn how to rejoice today. This is the day that the Lord had made, and He had made me glad. You can't worry about what's going on tomorrow. You got to think about what's going on today. I says, yeah, they're supposed to put me out tomorrow, but there's just something about it. If you just take care of today, what you do today will change your tomorrow. It's the battle between these ears. This is the arena of faith. This is where you're going to win. This is where you're going to lose. This is what's going to determine your future. This is what's going to determine your tomorrow. Right here, up here in your mind. And the mind is the battleground. I'm telling you, you can have authority over your thinking. You can have authority over your mind. You can learn how to tame your mind. And you know how it is when your mind starts thinking stuff. And Have you ever laid in bed and your mind just went crazy just thinking this and that? You didn't even open your mouth. You went crazy with your mouth closed. Next thing you know, you start getting nervous and shaking. If somebody was looking at you, they probably tried to figure out what's happening with you. You're just laying there beating yourself up with your thoughts, and the devil's just laughing. And remember how bad you are? You ain't nothing. Remember what you did 20 years ago? He walked you up 20 years in 15 minutes and lost hair on your pillow. You're just laying there. But what if we can tame our thoughts, tame our tongue, bring our mind and our thinking under the control of the Holy Spirit. You deny access to the suggestions of the enemy. Once you become aware of this, you're going to become aware of the different suggestions he makes throughout the day. The Bible says, cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you don't know the knowledge of God, how are you going to know when a thought comes against the knowledge of God? That's why you got to get in the Word. That's why you got to be in a church that will sit you down and tell you something. You need to hear a thought. You need to hear the word. When the devil shows up with something that didn't come from the word, you know it. The Bible says, I'd rather have Jesus in silver and gold. That ain't nowhere in the Bible. The Bible says, God helps him that helps themselves. Benjamin Franklin said that. That ain't nowhere in the Bible. You got to know what you're thinking comes from the word of God. When the devil comes against you, when the devil comes with a suggestion, it's decorated in religion, wrapped up in a bow and looking good. You know when you start taking it apart, that ain't God. When the devil comes up to you, you done lost this and you done lost that. He gets you to settle for a living a life that you lost everything. And when he says to you, just like the Bible said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. You have to say, no, God didn't say that. Job said that. He was in a deranged mind when he said that. His mind was being messed with by the devil when he said that. I'm not going to do what Job did. I'm going to say what the Bible says. Gifts of God are given without repentance. Once God did something for me, he didn't change his mind. He has blessed me, hallelujah. He ain't changed his mind. I got, to, I got to chill. God, I feel like I'm on a rocket about to take off. You got to learn how to cast those thoughts down. and Make those things obey the word. Because if you don't, you'll find yourself flowing with the 
suggestions of a defeated foe. All he got is an accusation. So I said, ask the Lord. And he said, what do you want me to talk about, Lord? He's told me, hang them in the mind so they can receive what I finished. All that I have done is being blocked because they won't hold up their shield of faith. He said, what's the shield of faith for? And it's for fiery darts. What are the fiery darts? The suggestions of the accuser. The shield of faith says, by his stripes I am healed, and in my pathway is life, or death. What we're doing, we got the shield of faith and it's leaning against our leg. We got fiery darts all in our chest, your hips, and your head. And I see this clearly in every area of victory. The accuser showed up, trying to convince you that the lie is the truth. That's what fear is, making yourself somehow believe that the lie is the truth. That ends today, world change. I realize I haven't shared a scripture, and I know it feels funny me talking for so long without sharing a scripture, without opening up a Bible. I had to get everybody on the boat before we started the journey. I had to make sure you understand the destination. I have to make sure you understand where we're on the way to. Somebody say, where are we on our way to? One word, victory. A lot of things you've been trying to get to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to be ready to take back the battleground. The key to total life prosperity is the Lord. It's God's presence in your life that causes you to be successful. Not your personality or the number of degrees you have. Stop pursuing things and start pursuing God. When God's rock-solid presence is with you, His favor will be evident in your life. We want you to enjoy the fullness of God's blessings in your life. And may Jesus bless you. We never like to end our program without giving you a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you'd like to make Jesus the Lord of your life, just say this simple prayer with me. Jesus, I repent of my sins. Please come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that simple prayer with me, we'd like to believe you got saved. Get in a good Bible-based church. Keep God first place in your life, and he'll take you places you never dreamed of being.